Namaste world, my name is Alan and I'm a proud Indian. I make my home on native land that is occupied by the descendants of genocidal maniacs in this region that is presently called Canada. Before I emigrated to Canada, I spent most of my life in Kuwait. All of my adult life, my working career life was in Kuwait. Okay. So on my resume, it is my experience and work is based in Kuwait. So when I came to Canada and I started to seek employment out here, I was always interviewed by some males, some females, it was always two or three people interviewed me. And on many, many occasions, I was denied employment all because I worked in Kuwait. And the reason they gave me is this version, they would tell me. Looking at your resume, we notice that uh, all your experience is in Kuwait. And since you worked in Kuwait, you will not be able to work in our office because in our office we have a lot of women working here. So, good luck with your search for employment. You know, you're shown the door. Bang. I don't know what it is with these white bastards, but they have this thing in their head, okay, that we men of color are unable to mix, mingle with the opposite sex, that is women. This is what they think. Even now, I'm a retired person, okay? I'm still having that fucking problem. I want to point out to the world that when I worked in Kuwait, okay, I've had a lot of women bosses, okay? Arab Islamic bosses. They wore a hijab and they delegated, the women would delegate, dele, delegate work to me and to other men. And we coexisted with the, with the women. Yet, these fucking evil white bastards, they think that we men of color hate all women. I think the white people, the men, are talking about themselves. They are spreading misinformation in their own community just to cover up the male, the white male's domination begins with dominating their own women, oppressing their own women, exploiting their own women, sexually exploiting their own women. It is all a white male's weakness. And they are trying to push it over to us people of color. The white male is a coward. He is so fucking shitless. And the white woman is the mother of all evil. I will you identify the man who beat you? Most certainly will. What's up, right history on. buffs? Welcome back to the Trap History Channel, where we fearlessly dive into the untold stories that challenge our understanding of the past. Today, we're embarking on a thought-provoking journey, exploring the complex relationship between white women and the well-being of the black man throughout U.S. history.
be warned, because we're about to uncover some uncomfortable truths. Now, when we think of crack I mean. White women, we often envision the nurturing and caring figures portrayed in literature and media. However, history reveals a different side of the story, a side rife with tensions, power dynamics, and instances where the well-being of black men has been at stake. From racial hoaxing to false accusations, the narrative of white women as a threat to the black man is not a recent phenomenon. It stretches back through the annals of time, leaving a lasting impact on the lives of individuals and communities. One of the pioneers in exposing the injustices faced by black men at the hands of white women was the remarkable Ida B. Wells. Through her investigative journalism, Wells fearlessly challenged the prevailing narratives and shed light on the darker realities that many were unwilling to confront. Throughout history, we've witnessed instances where false accusations, racial biases, and power imbalances have had dire consequences for the black community. From the unjust trials reminiscent of To Kill a Mockingbird to the infamous Karen memes that have captured the attention of the internet, these incidents reflect the complex dynamics at play.